guys. So it's me, Lori. Um, I'm going to show you. You know, I I am really late to the party, but I am going to show you these hand-stitched little um, clusters. Are they not so cute? Hold on, let me just reach up here. And try not to fall down. Okay. So. Sorry about that. That's my hair. Okay, so. Are these not cute? They are. What are they called? I can't remember. Um, but they're just like little hand stitched clusters. So the first person I saw make these was Darcy. And I thought, oh my god, those are so cute. So then I saw, um. Gail Agostinelli. She made them. And I thought, wow. Look, these are too cute and fun to make. So, buckle up. It's going to be a long video. Get a drink. I have some, and it may be used. Um, that's pretty. But, this is what Gail uses to, I think I have some other stuff too, similar to this, maybe more sturdy. I'm not 100% sure where it is though. So I think this is what she was using. I think. I don't know. I'm not sure. She said it was for embroidery. So, I think this is for embroidery. And then, I think I'm going to drag out this and just cut one off to use maybe. I just cut these off as I want to use them because if I cut them all off all at one time where would I put them it has an odd smell like it smells minty and it smells it has an odd smell no oh, I've never washed it I should. I just don't want to lose that pretty color, you know. And I'm afraid if I wash it, I will lose that pretty color. So. Okay. And then, I have, I went outside in the dreaded shred, the shed. Oh my gosh, I, I hate going out there. There's bugs. Um. I grabbed this one. Not real sure. Like, ooh, that's wide. What I'm going to use out of here. Oh, and that's beautiful blue. Oh, here's an open one. Oh, yeah, that's really pretty. I got flowers that match that. Um, that's wide. That's really thin. I remember when I got this and I was like, wow, that's really thin. Okay, so. There is. I wonder if I could sew with that. I don't know. Oops. Yeah, I'm just going to pull that out too. That's good. That's good, that's good. Out of there. Whoops. Okay. Ooh. And there is a red, a red something. I'm gonna remember that for when I do my. I'm gonna try this. Uh, I'll try it again this weekend. Ugh. And I grab this one in this one. This one's just junk. Oh wow. A bunch of little bright pink roses. Pale pink roses. 
Those are really pretty. I don't really know if I'll use those, but I'll leave them up. Ooh, those are pretty. And they have little flowers that match. Hmm. Some really wide seam binding. I could have used that the other day. getting like complicated now okay oh wow I wonder if I could sew with that okay hmm okay I'm throwing all the blues back for now I'm throwing the blues back because I'll just do a pink one okay so I got one more little bitty one. One I already looked through. I didn't really see anything great in the one I already looked through. I already looked through this one. I really didn't see. But if I'm going to use the pink, that's too big. That's not too big. And maybe that. But can't be all pink. Pink and brown is a good color combination. Um, oh look, I already had some cut. Is it the same thing? Uh-huh, same thing. Okay. Really see anything in here. I already peeked in this one. I got this one. That's pretty. That's pretty. Ooh. Those would work. Okay. Oh, too bad we have one with the blue. Okay. So. Ooh, that's really pretty. I like that piece too. I really like that, especially with the buttons. Okay, I'll leave that out too. Okay. That's plenty to look at. Okay, so. Then I also dug out a few beads and I picked this one out of it. Now, I gotta find. I only have a little itty bitty container of pieces of embossing thread. a white button. That would look good. Oh, yeah. There's embossing stuff in here. That looks really old. I bet it's not good. This one is good. And there's pink and orange. And there's cream. And bright, bright, bright pink. I don't think it goes with anything out here. Oh, there's some needles. Take those needles out. Okay. Wish I had some black embossing thread. But I don't. So. I don't think I can use this piece. So I'll put that one back over there. Okay. So, you just look at what you got. And you pick things out. 
That is so pretty. I already know I want to use some of this. Our wind is really fierce here this morning in Oklahoma. Uh, okay, so I cut a piece of that one off. I should open one of these. Put my junk back in it that I don't use. I wonder if I could throw some of these into some of them. I don't know. Okay, then I gotta look and see if any of these needles are big enough for this mercerized, I don't know what that means, Boil Fast Clark's Mercerized Yarn. Is it yarn or thread? I don't know. But I'm going to try using it because I really love that color. Let me see this needle. It's the biggest one, I think. No, I think this is the biggest one. Okay. I, I'm trying to do this close where you can see it. And I hope my hands are not annoying. Because it is so big. Okay. did I think this was going to be so easy? Okay, let's try. A little glue. And then pinch the edge of your thread. Okay. I don't like wicking my thread. I don't know where this thread has been. And then it'll go through your needle real easy. Okay. So let's see. Well, first we got to have the base. There were some cut bases in here. But I am thinking something else. I wonder could I use this? Like, I don't think there's any rules to this. I don't know if this will work. I don't know. I've only did this once before. <laughs> okay, that is really pretty. And so I could put my sewing here and then I would be able to like glue this on a page and have one of those flip up things. Doesn't it look just so white and big and daunting? It really does. Huh, these only took me like, um, these two little ones literally only took me 15 minutes, maybe, a piece. The hardest part was just picking out the fabric and what I wanted to do. It already has a cat hair. Blech. Okay, so. I know I want to use some. I really like the paler one better than the... I have had these for years. Okay. Don't fall. I think I'll take a good piece. I don't like going out into my shed. There are some serious looking bugs out in that shed. I know everything's like sealed in tubs and, and okay, but man, I'm not sealed in a tub. <laughs> There were wolf spiders out there, so huge, like bigger than the palm of my hand. I hate that shed. Ooh, I hate it. And it's a nice shed. Just get bugs in it. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, so that could go there. And then maybe piece of this, piece of this. Not on the floor. Okay, so I could put this there. You don't see that. I really like this ribbon. I don't know. I wonder if these would sew in. Oh no, there's a pretty, pretty applique. I could put that applique like right there. And then maybe, maybe a piece of this. And then this, with its raggediness, could go, I don't need the whole thing, could go like there. And if these pearls weren't so white, they're just so white, I don't know if I have any others. Yeah, that doesn't work. It's too white. Okay, but maybe the button. I know it is a white, white button, but maybe that would work. I like it. And I don't think the whole thing has to be covered. I just don't. I don't think the whole thing has to be covered. Okay, let me get out my pins because I'm going to pin mine down. Wait, wait, I have these. Now they are incredibly white, but um, does this go? Does this go not like um, <laughs> the hand sewing things? Or is this not it? If it's not, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> Okay, I gotta get my pins. They're not on that side. For a sewing box, I use an old eight track case. <clears throat> Works just fine. This is my mother's sewing tomato. Okay, I think I'll stick a pin in here to hold that all in place and I think I will stick a pin in here to hold this in place and when I get to this I will remember to put it I hope Okay, I'm not going to add any of these beads. 
Maybe I will, maybe I won't. I don't know. Um, okay, so here is this. No, uh, do I have to cut this? I don't think I have to cut that. I don't know. I don't think so. So, according to Gail, we're just going to weave this in and out. Hmm. Oh, I need my sponge. I don't know if I have it in here. Oh, that would be such a bummer. You know what? I don't need that particular sponge. Because I have the sponge that I sew my books with. going. Uh, oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. Okay. <laughs> nope. It's okay. Just lay that under there. One nice thing is this doesn't have to be perfect. That don't look bad. Okay, look, it doesn't look great. By any means. But it doesn't look bad. So, I think I'm going to cut my thread. Give it a good pull through. I'll just hold it down. If I feel like it's coming through, then I would hold my thread down. I'm not a stranger to hand sewing. I actually really like to hand sew. This just is um, different. Like, you're not making, you're not making something. You are, but you aren't. And I don't usually sew with embossing thread. And I'm not even sure this is embossing thread. <laughs> okay. You don't really see the thread. Did I mess up? I messed up. Okay. So one of the good things about not tying your thread is that if you mess up, you can just pull it back out. Like so. And I still end up putting this in my mouth. Okay, so I'm going to just tack this down because it's bothering me that it comes up. So I'm going to go ahead and just tack that down a little bit. Okay. So my fabric is tacked down. Let me make sure I go in the right way this time. Oh, oh, oh. God, let's clear up a wide, a wide thing. Give me a wide berth. 
I don't think I'm straight anymore. So let's get back to being straight. And I don't want to bunch it up, that's for sure. Okay. This is going to take a lot longer than 15 minutes. I did not plan on doing such a big one, but I wonder if those beads will even fit over this big needle. So let's see that. Please don't let me get beads everywhere. over the big needle. So, hmm. But they will hand feed. like that. That's cute. Oh yeah, that's cute. Just tuck a bead in randomly. That's cute. So that's fun. And I'm going to leave about a quarter inch between my rows. Okay, make sure that's right. Because we're fixing to go into it again. this right? Nope, 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 nope. Back that needle out. I'm going to go into that pink flower. So I want to make sure it was lined up. I don't really make journals where this is going to work, but the colors, but it's so pretty. I always want to make journals with these colors, but you know, they're just not something I'm used to, so I don't grab them. And these leftovers, these roses are leftovers from a baby blanket that I made. And I also used black roses on it. And everybody told me that was going to look so strange, but it turned out looking just great.
the, the black roses were um, bigger than the little pink ones. I think I'm going to have to go up with one more row along the top eventually. Hand sewing used to be one of my most favorite things to do. I've done a quilt hand sewing and some throw pillows and lots of clothes for like Barbie and Skipper. You know those girls. <laughs> I used to have two dogs called Barbie and Skipper, but I didn't sew clothes for them. Okay. It is a little hard to pull out. Okay, now I gotta find my second string. There we go. But I don't want to make a knot. But I do want to make, see what I did? I made a little tie-off point. Just to, um, I don't know, keep it more secure. Like, if my thread, like, pulled through or whatever later on. Not that I'm going to worry too much about it with this. But, you might. Do you know who I absolutely love to watch so? And... That is Clint Ratcliffe. Um, he is Michelle Ratcliffe's husband. And he explains everything in such nice detail. And, um, of course y'all know, I, I love watching her. She is just funny. And, I don't know, I, I like her a lot. But her husband is very entertaining. And when I watch him sew, he's very relaxing to watch. He explains everything. He talks. I, I like watching him sew. Plus, you know, you have Michelle's laughter in the background. And that just... Her laughter... I don't know. I got a few YouTubers I like. Um, Y'all know I love Artie Mates. I love Andrea Ellen. I just think she is amazing. And y'all know I like Yvonne. Um, I don't know. I like watching Darcy. Darcy's funny. haven't been on YouTube a lot. So I notice most of the time you can see people's thread. So I think I picked a too creamy colored thread. So, I think the next time I get groceries from Walmart, I will see if I can add embroidery thread. You can add scrapbook paper. Um, I've been buying my black paper from there. It's called Tuxedo something. Tuxedo Smith. It's pretty good. And um, I've been buying my white cardstock from them. Um, it's 65 pound and it is I think it's called uh, Tuxedo Smith. It's marshmallow. It's pretty good Of course, I buy my copy paper there I used to not like Walmart that much, but I don't know With this pandemic, I guess I am a little nervous 
to go walk around a store. But I do still have to go into Aldi's because, you know, there's just stuff you get certain places. So, to get lamb, I go into Aldi's. They usually have a good selection of lamb, and they have nice fresh salmon. So, I go there for that. And then I still go to the butcher to get my beef. And of course, me and him were talking about the COVID, and uh, he insists <laughs> uh, people are falsely saying chickens carry COVID. I was dying laughing because um, he says chickens do not carry COVID, which was just funny to me because I'd never heard chickens do carry COVID. <laughs> He's a nice guy and he sharpens a knife for me every time I go in and he doesn't charge me anything. So I just pick different knives to take every time I go because I'm not going to pass up getting a knife sharpened. And he doesn't seem to mind, so. pretty curious. He wonders what the hell I do to my knives. <laughs> and I need to take so many in to get sharpened. But. Okay. So this is taking a little longer. Oh, we gotta pull it out. I'll mess it up again. It would not be a project of mine if I didn't mess up a few times. I'm going to get another bead in there, so maybe I'll just go ahead and put a bead in now. Oh, God, because that's not where I want to put a bead. <laughs> then I really would have messed up. My cats are loving the wind. They go from window to window to window to watch the leaves fall. And, um, you know, baby escaped not too long ago. He got loaded with fleas and ticks. And so he is ready. He is ready to hit that door again. And I barely got him back last time. And I don't want to take a chance of him going back out again. We got all sorts of critters out here. I just don't want him to end up something's dinner. I know a lot of people let their cats out, but I'm just a little too chicken. He be my baby. I do take him out on a, on a leash. I take both of them out on a leash. I get some strange looks sometimes, but hmm. they need fresh air. They need exercise. But they don't need to be alley cats. Okay, so that would be a good place for a beat. So let me pull this out. Let me get a bead. Put it through there. Yeah, that would be a good place for a bead. I'm going to just tack that down a little. Oh yeah, that's a cute place for a bead. Go back in one more time. 
back out one more time before we switch rows. I think I want to tack that down. Yes, guys, I know. I mumble when I craft. I just can't help it. It's that's what I do. <laughs> so I'm going to come down here about a quarter of an inch. And go back in. I don't want to move that pin, so I'm just going to try to work that thread over the pin. Oh, I thought of it. They call this slow stitching. That is what they call it. Slow stitching. Um, I think that is funny. But, it's what it's called. Slow stitching. It is slow. So, it isn't, it isn't not accurate. I'm liking this. I'm liking this a lot. Ugh. It's hard to pull it through. For me it is. I know a lot of you. You're tough. Okay, so I gotta go in. Right? I wanna go in right there. Okay, I'm gonna come back here. more thread. I don't have the steadiest hand. I wonder who came up with this and decided to call it slow stitching. And then you know what else I have seen? I skipped a whole row. Yikes. Ow! I have seen <laughs> um, at Joann's and they have crumbs, uh, fabric crumbs and the only person I have ever heard call it that what is our girl that is out of Vegas no what is her name oh she's so cute and I love I love 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 watching her lives and darned if I can think of her name Aw, oh, darn. I hate that. But she's the only person I've ever heard call them crumbs. Mm, that's going to bother me. I watch her all the time. She's so cute. She has such a nice personality. Like any mama would like that girl for a daughter-in-law. What is her name? Mm, it'll come to me. Okay, I gotta go back in here because I missed that stitch. And by the time I'm done with this row, I will need more thread, so it's okay. 
Oh, darn. You know, she has dark hair and she wears glasses. And she always is making ephemera up in advance for her journals. And darn. And she's cute as button. Hmm. What a blank. I'm so sorry. But she calls them crumbs. Her scrap crumbs. And then I saw it at Joanne's. And I was like, no way. They stole our girl's idea. Her lingo. Mm-mm-mm. I can't think of her name. not Roxy because she's from Italy. Oh. To Sami Rose. That's her name. Well, that's not her name, but that's her uh, channel name. I just love watching her. And sadly, for a mom who has no um, daughter-in-laws, I would love to have a daughter-in-law like her. She just, she just is amazing. We got a lot of girlfriends coming and going, but we don't got no daughter-in-laws. One day, one day they'll find the right one. <laughs> and my boys are nice. <laughs> huh. I don't always think that the girls they bring home are so nice. Don't tell anybody. But my boys are nice. Gosh, I hope they're nice outside the house. I, I've never heard anything bad. My one son dates a girl named Megan. She is so awesome. She is so awesome. She is the bomb.com and the bag of chips. But they don't act like they want to get married. I don't understand it. And they've dated for a while. I'm not going to get grandbabies if nobody has kid, you know, gets married. I'm not going to have no grandbabies. God knows this girl wants some grandbabies. Okay. So I want to put another bead, like right about there, but I need some more thread. And I want to be sure to put that, oh darn, I didn't sew that in where I wanted to sew it in at, and it would have added so much. Hmm. I'm going to go back and do it. It's okay. I love this thread. Somebody gave me this thread. I just love it. What I don't want to do is get glue on my needle. Okay. 
So I'm just going to tack this in. I'm not going to go through every single hole. But I do want to get it in there. Because it's pearls and roses and needs a little lace. Nope, nope, nope. Did it already go through? Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> okay, try it again, girl. Okay. Let's put our finger on it so we don't lose it again. And once you get a couple of them in, you won't have to worry about that coming, coming through. What did you do? Well, look at that. Okay. And then we'll go in two. What did I do? Why do I do that? Mm. Maybe the lace isn't meant to be. I'm going to try this one more time. If it doesn't work, or I screw up again, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> third time is it. Well, I do have something interesting to talk about. Did you know there was a sequel to Golden Girls? I never knew that. It was called um, Something Hotel, I think. I'm looking for the show to watch. I can't find it anywhere, but I am looking for it to watch. They sold the house because Dorothy got married. And then they purchased a hotel. That's about as interesting as my life gets, guys. It's semi straight. Okay. And then I'm just going to go down. 
to the bottom row. And do it again. I like this pearl being on there. It is different, but it is pretty. And I think it's fairly straight. I'm going to do one more row down here and then um, that is a little close but it's okay I'm going to do the top I don't even know if I should do the top but I mean it wouldn't hurt I can take this pin out for sure and I want to add one more bead so I'm going to add it down here somewhere but I just want to make sure I tack this crocheted um, doily in best I can the rest of it will kind of take care of itself So I think this is where I will put my other bead in at so it doesn't get lost. That's right. Do you know I did it again? I'm so stupid sometimes. I really upset somebody one time when I called myself stupid. <laughs> I really am sorry. I, uh, I, I do call myself stupid quite frequently. It's not, um, I'm not putting myself down. Just sometimes I do silly things. Oh, and I didn't laugh at those people because they said, Oh, I just dig a hole.
go in where and there is my third bead Now I've captured my pearls. There. Okay. So that's almost done. But I do want to come back up here and just run one more. Um, so I'm just going to catch the fabric and the thread. And then make my knot. And then I'm going to do it again. And then make my knot. And that gives me a pretty secure place to cut. And I'm going to cut those pearls off because they don't need to be out there like that yet. Okay, so, so I'm just going to come back in here because the top didn't get tacked down as nice as I would have liked it to. So, I'm just going to come back in and do the top. Just a little better. I told you it was going to be a long video. I warned you. I missed it entirely. <laughs> okay. Did not even get close. Oh no. Yeah. I'm going to do one more. Just because there's a big gap. I just want to get that to lay down. Okay. One thing for sure I like is how forgiving this is. Like, it doesn't matter if your stitches are not completely straight. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you go into your flower or 
it don't matter. It just don't matter. Okay. Don't you cue it. Okay, so that's it. And I'm going to tie this off. I'm going to do it right here. Okay. That's it. Okay, so that is my I I think I had one more pin in there. I don't feel it. I don't see it. So I guess I didn't. Okay, that's my slow stitching for today. And I might come back um this weekend and do it again. I didn't get my button in there though. I would have liked the button in there somewhere. Like down here. I would have liked that button. Flip it over. Come in here real quick. Tie my button down. Okay. I'm not done sewing it. I just want to tie my button down. Okay. And we're going to have this. Okay. We can pull out our needle now. We don't need it anymore. We're going to grab these two threads right here that we did for our button. We're going to tie it one more time. kind of tight. Then we're going to come back here. We're going to snip this and I want to tie it. Whoops. And if you really wanted to, but I don't know if I have enough thread, you could maybe make a little bow. I don't think I have enough thread, but there are people that can tie bows with a minuscule amount of thread. There we go. We got a little itty baby bow. there. A button. Oh, maybe we should cut this. Wait. 
We gotta tuck this in somewhere. So there is our slow stitched, so cute, it, I, I'm just going to say it's hand stitched, but it is slow stitch. that's what it's called, I like it. Okay guys, thank you for hanging out for me, if you did, and if you didn't, I do completely understand. So I will see you guys later, maybe this weekend, I'm going to do this again, maybe not, I don't know. I live day by day by the seat of my pants. Who knows? See you guys later. Take care. Bye.